Hey, welcome to Vortex Garage, and we're knee-deep in a major service on this 1983 Jaguar XJ6. Well, we wanted to take a quick minute and do a short video here to talk a little bit about parts, and more specifically, parts for the AC system on these cars. Now, as you know from a prior video, our AC compressor appeared to lock up at one point, basically throwing the belt. We ended up cutting the belt off to get by, and we knew that during our major service, we'd have to figure out what went wrong and go ahead and remedy it. Well, we finally got to the stage where it was time to diagnose what was wrong with our compressor. And I was really hopeful that the compressor itself was okay because I knew the system had some sort of pressure in it. Although I haven't had a chance to hook the gauges up with the car running, I know there is some sort of refrigerant in it. I also know that the prior owner indicated that he had replaced the AC compressor in 2020. And in, indeed the compressor looks like a new or rebuilt unit. So that definitely is the case, and it has the fittings showing it was converted to R134. So when we went to diagnose it, I was very happy to find that it was in fact the clutch, and more specifically the clutch bearing that had failed, causing it to lock up. And in fact, that's what we have here. Now before we get into what we found, I want to stress that part of this is to talk about some of the challenges of finding parts for JAGs. Now specifically on that, a lot of times you go to find a part and it is a JAG specific item. Sometimes they're easy to find, sometimes they're challenging. But there are actually many cases on this vehicle where you find something is actually quite a parts bin special. A good example of this, the Lucas Ignition Amplifier, sounds like a pretty specialized part. Well inside of it is a common GM HEI module. Now the actual AC compressor that JAG used is another example of this. It's not a JAG specific part, it's actually a GM A6 compressor. The GM A6 compressor was basically used on millions of vehicles throughout the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. So finding parts, finding a compressor should be no problem at all. Yet here we are with this video to tell you that I have found a clutch that appears to be unobtainium. And there's a little bit of a story behind it. So let's talk about what we found when we removed the clutch, and then we'll talk about this part that we have sitting here that, surprise, surprise, isn't the right one. All right, so first of all, we'll show a little clip of when we removed this, and uh, one thing that I found interesting was this piece here. This looked pretty unique to what I was expecting to see on an A6 compressor, and I figured that this piece was actually a JAG special part that modified the clutch and brought the V-belt out to a certain arrangement. As you can see here, I've got a number of ball bearings that fell out of this bearing assembly, and that is exactly what locked up and caused our belt to slip. The bearing in the clutch basically froze, and as you can tell, it looks pretty ratty and nasty. Again, we'll show you clips of when we removed the entire piece here. And when we finally got it off, there was a ton of metal shavings and friction material. This clutch really was toast. So the good news is though, I was able to take the hub from the clutch, which has, it fits on the end of the compressor that spins the actual compressor itself. I was able to put that back on and spin the compressor by hand. And it felt good, it felt nice and smooth, and it felt like it was doing compressing, basically. So I felt pretty good about that. I thought, you know what? I think we'll be able to go ahead and get an A6 clutch and go ahead and swap it out. And hopefully, cross our fingers, the compressor didn't get damaged and the system is actually charged properly. And hey, maybe we'll have AC. One can dream, right? So I went to several parts houses and found the same part number listed for the 83 Jag and went ahead and ordered one up. And when it came, well, it was pretty apparent it wasn't gonna fit. And this in lies where we start to uncover the problem here. So again, let's take a look at the hub from our original one and note that it has a splined interface here. And here's the one that came. And as you can see, first of all, there's some very obvious physical differences. Again, ignore the black paint on here. I was painting some of the original bolts and use this as a uh, holder because it's basically destined for the trash. But you can definitely tell the physical differences. And more importantly, the fact that this is a press fit with a keyway. It means essentially there is no way this would go on to our compressor. That's a bummer right there. Of course, it doesn't stop at that. We have this here. This is the, the centerpiece. As you can tell, there's the groove for the V-belt. Absolutely no provision for this piece. So obviously, this is integral to our, our specific clutch. And the other piece here, again, very different. Now, quick sidebar, in the hopes that our clutch was actually okay and it was just the bearing that had failed, I did buy a bearing for the A6 compressor clutch. That came 
And as you can see here, that is indeed the right bearing for this clutch assembly. However, it is a different bearing than this one. As you can see, it wouldn't ever press in. It's too big. So, not good. And finally, just to showcase the differences, here is the electromagnet. As you can see here, the wiring is different, but obviously that would be solvable. But the big issue here is just the physical differences of the two units. So what gives? If we have an A6 compressor, why do we have this compressor clutch that is so different than what we ordered? Well, that's what led me down a little bit of the rabbit hole. If you know before, I mentioned that the prior owner had replaced the compressor. So I went back and looked at compressors for this car, and indeed there are plenty of remanufactured A6 compressors out there. But then there are what are referred to as new compressors. They're not rebuilt units, they are brand new units. And those are actually called S6 compressors. Now you can find these S6 compressors as an updated version of the A6, and the S6 compressor is often a new unit built by various companies, uh, those S6 compressors, as I noted, are often sold as upgraded units. From what I can tell doing some research, the big difference from the S6 to the A6, besides the clutch, obviously, is the fact that the, A the S6 has an aluminum body, which of course we can see ours definitely does. And I'm told, based on what I read, and I don't know how much I believe it, that the S6 is slightly more efficient for R134 conversions. It's entirely possible. So at any rate, it was very clear, okay, we've got an S6 compressor, not an A6 that the car should have had originally. So I figured, all right, I'll just return this and I'll buy an S6 compressor clutch. And that's where I hit a wall. I have spent hours searching and scouring the internet and I cannot find this S6 clutch anywhere. Okay, I take that back. I may have found one source for it. And that source is a wholesaler that sells to agricultural and heavy equipment that doesn't let you order from them unless you have an account set up as a shop. Now, yeah, I could probably call them and order it, but from what I can tell on Google, because uh, they don't have the price on their site unless you log in, from what I can tell the price of this clutch is actually very close to the price of an entirely new compressor. Now the value proposition of not knowing if our compressor was good or damaged was, hey, this is a very inexpensive clutch, we'll throw it on, we'll take that gamble. That gamble's not as valuable if you don't know the true condition of the compressor and th this part, which you might waste, uh, is close to its, its price. So that changes things. So the only one I can find, which I can't even validate that it truly is this one, is from a place I can't really order. And otherwise, this seems to strangely be unobtainium. So I wanted to call that out because this is something you run into with older vehicles. You never know from a prior owner what was replaced on the car. And even if the thing was replaced, sometimes new components get upgraded and changed from what was on there originally. And I don't even mean the prior owner doing an upgrade specifically. I mean, you literally go to buy the same part that was on the car, but the aftermarket has upgraded it and changed it. So now, while yes, you can buy true A6 compressors and A6 parts, there's in the market, and they're not necessarily listed as such, there's these quote unquote S6 compressors that are listed as new. And a lot of people go, oh, it's new, that's better than rebuilt, which believe me, it isn't always. And they end up with something that is not serviceable. And that's what we're finding here. We probably have a perfectly fine compressor, but we can't service it because I can't find this piece of unobtainium. So what I have been relegated to being forced to do is buying an entire new compressor. And uh, well, that's what we're gonna have to put on the car. So I did wanna call that out. And I am curious about anyone with a Jag, if you, you can comment, what does your car have? Do you have the, the A6 with this style clutch? You'd see this on the front face. Or do you have the S6 with this style with the closed front and the bolts that go around this hub piece? I am definitely curious about that. Now for us, it definitely is a bummer. And in some respects, like when I talked about finding a GMHEI module in the Lucas ignition amp, well, you can save a lot of money when you find that. In this particular case, finding an S6 compressor here and not being able to purchase the clutch, I'm gonna lose money because I'm gonna have to purchase an entire compressor. But it's not all bad. Um, to be fair, when you do have a clutch failure, you always have the risk that the compressor itself was damaged internally. And I have no idea what else was replaced 
when the prior owner did the compressor. He did note the AC wasn't working, so it's entirely possible that some other things need to be replaced. So we'll use this as an opportunity to replace what appears to be an original receiver dryer that should have been replaced with the compressor. And we have our expansion valve that we'll go ahead and replace as well. And that'll give us an indication on what's in the system because we don't know why the other compressor failed. And for all we know, it could have put a lot of material into the system. So this will be our chance to recover whatever's in it, replace those key components, vacuum a flush out and then vacuum the system and of course replace any O-rings or leaks that we have. So the point is, hopefully we'll end up with a fully working air conditioning system, but the dream of just replacing the part didn't come to fruition. Now there is one final piece of this puzzle that I do still find confusing. If I cannot locate this clutch anywhere and the prior owner replaced the compressor in 2020, why does this clutch look like it's been on the car for darn near 40 years? Why does this bearing look so bad? Is this really the quality of the part that it just looks this bad after a couple years and a thousand miles? I suppose that's possible. I did make a note earlier that remanufactured isn't always worse than new. In today's aftermarket world, a lot of these new parts, quite frankly, are garbage. And uh, I am worried that the new compressor might be garbage and that this compressor itself might be poorly made. But we're gonna go with it and hope for the best. But that is certainly one plausible answer. This could simply be bad parts quality that degraded fairly quickly. But that doesn't speak well if the bearing looks like this after a thousand miles in a couple years. The only other plausible explanation I can come up with is two other things. Number one, it is possible that the S6 compressor existed years ago and the AC was worked at some point. It was repaired and new compressor was installed many years ago. So maybe this is a 10 year old bearing or a 15 year old bearing. That is certainly possible. And the S6 compressor has existed for that long. A final, a final piece that might be the case is, well, maybe I'm wrong about JAG always using the A6 from the factory. I don't know if the S6 existed back then, but it's entirely possible this was indeed the factory clutch. I'd be curious to see pictures from your engine bays or just comment, does your Jag have one of these and do you know if it's original? So like most things, there's gonna be parts of this puzzle we may never know the answer to. In the end, we're gonna go ahead and put in a new compressor and use the opportunity to properly go through the AC system. And a uh, final thought, if you have a source for one of these, I'd love to know it and I'd love to share it with the community because for me, it meant buying more parts than I expected to buy. Maybe it'd help someone in the future. Well, if you like this video, drop us a like, drop us a subscribe because we'll certainly have more for you here on Vortex Garage.